Yaskawa Electric America welcomes you to the e-learning module, New G7 Functions. My name is Paul Avery, Product Training Engineer for Yaskawa AC Drive Products. I'll be your instructor for this e-learning module. In this e-learning module, we will discuss three new functions. First, we will cover the feed forward function and how it modifies the ASR circuitry to achieve improved speed response. Next, we will go into the new field forcing feature and discuss the benefits of pre-building motor flux. Lastly, we will discuss the new overvoltage suppression function and how it deals with powerful regeneration without causing drive over voltage faults. The automatic speed regulator, or ASR circuitry, is a PI circuit that regulates the drive output to achieve accurate speed regulation. In order to achieve tighter speed regulation, more aggressive ASR settings are required. If there is some play in the load, an aggressive ASR might cause oscillation in the output speed because the ASR will keep changing as it chases the inconsistent load. If the load has a large inertia, then an aggressive ASR will cause vibration and the drive's output frequency will probably overshoot the intended speed. The feed forward function will isolate the ASR's reaction to motor speed errors caused by a frequency reference change from the reactions to motor speed errors caused by the load changes. By separating the two sources of motor speed errors, the feed forward can more effectively compensate for the errors without the use of overly aggressive ASR gains. How the feed forward function calculates the amount of compensation is based on motor inertia and the inertia of the load. In the end, feed forward will improve the speed profile of a low inertia system without the instability of an aggressive ASR. It will also make positioning of higher inertia systems more accurate by eliminating frequency response overshoot. One of the ways that the feed forward function achieves the stable frequency profile with little overshoot is that it will keep the integrator of the ASR clamped at zero even while the motor is accelerated. A benefit of the feed forward function is that it will stabilize the automatic speed regulator and the drive's automatic current regulator, allowing them both to respond quicker to load changes. Applications where the load inertia varies greatly may not benefit from the feed forward function due to the inability to specify an accurate system inertia to the feed forward function. Also, applications that require extremely tight acceleration and deceleration ramps will not benefit from the feed forward function. The first step to using the feed forward function is to enable it. Parameter N5-01 will turn the feed forward circuitry on and off. If the drive is configured as a closed loop flux vector controller, then the default setting of the feed forward function is off. If the drive is configured for the open loop vector 2 control mode, the default setting of the feed forward function is on. Feed forward is not available in the other drive control modes, including the open loop vector 1 mode. The key to effective feed forward use is to accurately program information about the motor into the drive. The setting of parameter N5-02 is necessary for the feed forward function to compensate for the torque necessary to accelerate the motor's rotor inertia. N5-02 is set in terms of acceleration time and is based on the inertia presented by the motor's physical components such as the shaft and rotor. Calculation of N5-02 will require the use of the formula shown here. T sub A is the program time to accelerate to speed. T sub 100 is the motor's rated full load torque. N is the rated speed of the motor. J sub M is the rotor inertia of the motor and can be found by contacting the motor manufacturer. The formula uses some metric units so the English to metric conversions for both the torque and inertia are also shown. Parameter N5-03 is the feed forward gain parameter. When the load inertia is larger than the motor's rotor inertia, it will be favorable to include it as part of the feed forward's compensation calculation. The proper setting of N5-03 can be reached one of two ways. If the ratio between load and rotor inertia is known, then set that ratio as the feed forward gain. If the load inertia is not known, then use the technique shown on the next slide to measure it. To properly measure the setting of parameter N5-03, we'll take a specific test setup of the drive. Start by making sure that the feed forward function is turned off. Next, adjust the torque limit function by lowering it until it will just allow the application to fully run. Set the acceleration time to 0.0 seconds. With the full load attached, accelerate to some speed under the maximum frequency of the drive. 
Measure the time that it takes for the drive to reach the set speed. Use the acceleration time and the settings of the parameters to calculate the proper feed forward gain using the formula shown. Absolutely do not use this test method if the application in question is a hoist or crane type of application due to the torque limiting. These graphs get a better idea of the possible advantages of the feed forward function. On each chart, the yellow trace is the commanded frequency reference, while the purple line is the motor speed. The left window shows a non-aggressive, non-feed forward setup. The non-aggressive settings of the ASR is to prevent the overshoot that occurs anyway. The right window shows the feed forward function turned on and the ASR set to factory default settings. The point at which speed degree is met is pointed out and shows a much quicker reaction without any overshoot when the feed forward function is enabled. Remember that the feed forward function is only available while in the closed loop flux vector or open loop vector 2 control modes. We should remember that the flux field is developed in the air gap between the rotor and stator whenever the stator is energized. Once a run command is given, the flux reference in the drive jumps in order to start producing the flux that is required before torque can be created. There is a time lag in developing the necessary flux for acceleration, which grows longer the larger the motor is. Field forcing calculates the delay using the motor data and compensates for it. The larger the motor, the longer the time constant, and the more the benefit of using field forcing. The field forcing function will boost the flux reference in order to more quickly build the actual flux necessary for acceleration. This leads to quicker motor reaction to a speed command. Parameter D6-03 will enable and disable the field forcing function. The actual flux field rarely changes except during the energy savings function. The flux itself does not need to change in order to produce torque but the flux field must be completely established before the torque can be produced. Field forcing is not limited to starting the motor. For instance, when the load increases while the drive is in the energy savings mode, the field forcing function will help stabilize the load by boosting the flux reference while the drive exits the energy savings mode. These scope trace captures are from a test stand that was accelerated with and without field forcing. The motor in question was a 15 horsepower motor and the field forcing showed a 100 millisecond improvement in acceleration when using field forcing. The non-field force trace lags behind the field forced one due to the time it takes to build up the flux in the motor, which in turn affects the ramp. Remember, the larger the motor, the greater for the benefit of field forcing. The final new G7 function we will cover in this e-learning module is the over voltage suppression function. Both the G7 and F7 drives feature OV suppression that will act to prevent some overvoltage faults during motor regeneration. The goal of OV suppression is to prevent excess power regenerated back to the drive during deceleration or from an overhauling load from raising the DC bus voltage to its trip level. Successful use of OV suppression will be very useful for cyclic applications that feature a regenerative portion to their cycle, such as the pump jack shown here. The OV suppression function prevents the DC bus from reaching trip levels by dropping the regenerative torque limit to zero whenever the bus voltage reaches a certain level. These two scope captures compare the OV suppression function with the stall prevention function. The red traces the output frequency, the green traces the torque, the violet traces the output current, and the aqua traces the motor speed. The left scope capture shows the OV suppression function smoothly stopping a full load in about a second even though the decel ramp was set to 0.0, .0 seconds. The right scope capture shows the stall prevention under the exact same circumstances not able to prevent the over voltage fault. To enable the OV suppression function, set parameter L3-11 equal to 1. The factory setting of the level at which the regenerative torque limit is reduced to zero is preset to an effective level, but the drive programmer has the ability to adjust it via parameter L3-12. It is a very good idea to turn off the stall prevention during decel parameter if the OV suppression is enabled so that the two functions do not prevent each other from functioning properly. Thank you for attending this Yaskawa Electric e-learning module. We greatly appreciate you taking the time to learn more about our products. If you would like additional training, please contact us through any of the methods shown on this slide. Thanks again and have a great day.